Hi, my name is Isaac from Langraph, and today I'm going to talk about how Langraph Studio can help make building LLM applications a collaborative process. After your developers have used the Langraph library to code the informational architecture of your agents, Langraph Studio is going to allow both developers and business people alike the ability to rapidly create, iterate, and test on different assistance from that information architecture. Before we dive into the weeds, let's imagine that we've created a simple React agent and we want to have two different assistants for this React agent. One is a coding assistant and the other is an assistant that's going to help users who are feeling down have a little bit better day. Let's hop into the studio and see this in action. All right, now we're in the studio. As we can see from the left-hand visualization, we've created a simple React graph for this example. In addition, when we click on the assistance dropdown, we're going to see that we've created two different assistants for this graph. If I click on the edit assistant button, I'll be able to see the config and the history of this assistant. This assistant is called the anthropic coding assistant. As you can see, its system prompt tells it that it's an expert at coding in JavaScript. And in addition, we've given it access to the Riza code interpreter tool, which is going to allow it to run code safely. If we click on version one, we can see that this version is an assistant that is an expert at writing code in Python. Let's say we're interested in learning some Python. If we click the set as current version button, we should see this pane close and the Anthropic Coding Assistant V1 selected as the assistant that we're going to run in the studio. Perfect. If we look right back up here to where the assistance dropdown was, we can see the Anthropic Coding Assistant V1 is selected. And now we can ask it a simple coding question. All right, we've just asked our assistant, how do you loop through an array and increment every element by one? As we can see, it writes out the proper Python code and then explains to our user exactly what happens. Now let's create a new thread and use V2 of the Anthropic Coding Assistant to verify that it responds in JavaScript instead of Python. All right. We can see that we've selected version two of our Anthropic Coding Assistant, and now we're going to submit the exact same question and see if it responds using JavaScript. Excellent. The agent now uses the JavaScript executor instead of the Python executor and still responds to our user with the correct code. Now let's take a look at our other assistant. Now I'm taking a look at the OpenAI Uplifting Assistant which has been told in its system prompt to respond to the user in an uplifting tone. If we click on version two, we can see that we've added some information to the system prompt by telling the agent to look up positive news on the internet and also giving it access to the Tavili search tool so that it's able to look up that positive news. This version is already selected. So all we have to do is go to the dropdown and click the check mark next to the OpenAI up Uplifting Assistant. Now, we can see that OpenAI Uplifting Assistant version two is selected in the top dropdown. And we can ask it a sample user question from a user who might be feeling a little down. All right, we've just asked our agent a sample user question, and we can see that it properly uses the Tavili search tool to look up some recent positive news. Then it responds to the user in an uplifting tone. And it makes sure to end on a high note to have our user feeling better. Let's start a new thread and look at using V1, which doesn't have access to search tools. All right, as we can see, we're using the uplifting assistant V1. And if we ask it the exact same question, it doesn't have any tools at its disposal. So all it's going to do is respond to the user in a positive tone. Now that we've taken a look at how assistants work in the studio, let's go back and explain a little bit what versioning and assistance mean with relation to your LangGraph applications. All right, as we just saw, the studio allows us to take a graph, create multiple assistants for that graph, and then create multiple versions for each of those assistants. Conceptually, we should think of our graph as the information architecture, how information is gonna flow through our agent. This graph is gonna be defined using the LangGraph Python or JavaScript libraries, which are low level to give developers the exact control they want over the information architecture. However, once this graph has been coded, business people and developers alike can create 
and iterate on assistance without having to write a single extra line of code, as we just saw. Assistance you can think of as core configuration changes to your graph. For instance, changing the LLM that powers your graph, or as we just saw, giving your graph access to different tools. Versions can be thought of another level of fine tuning and should really be used with specific goals in mind, such as creating an assistant that's perfect for one user. A way you could do this is by modifying the system prompt over time such that the agent's responses are in line with what the user expects and desires. Now that we have a better understanding of how assistance and versions relate to your underlying graph, let's go back to the studio and walk through how we can create our own assistance and versions from scratch. All right, now we're back in the studio. We can see we have the same React agent, but this time when I click on this assistance dropdown, I haven't created any yet. Let's click on the Create New Assistant button and create our first, first assistant. Let's call this one the OpenAI Assistant. We're going to obviously select the OpenAI model here, and then we're not going to give it any system prompt or tools yet. We're just going to click Save New Assistant. We can see that the Assistant's dropdown has updated to have the OpenAI Assistant V1 selected. If we wanted to add another version, we could click the Edit Assistant button and then type in a system prompt that we want to add to our assistant. We're going to keep it pretty vanilla for now and just tell it that it's a helpful assistant. We are then going to click on this Save as New Version button and we're going to see that the top dropdown changes from V1 to V2. If we go back into that Edit pane, we're going to be able to click on both of those assistants and see the config on the left hand side update as we change from version 1 to version 2. As we saw before, if we wanted to go back to version 1, all we have to do is click on version 1 and then click set as current version. Now in the top drop down we see V1. Now let's create another assistant, which we can do by clicking the create new assistant button. We can call this one our Anthropic Assistant. We're going to select the Anthropic model. And maybe for this one, we'll give it access to the Tavili search tool so it can use the internet. As we just did, we'll click on the Save New Assistant, and then we'll see that the Anthropic Assistant V1 has been selected in the top. We can use this check mark to select which assistant we are currently using in the studio. This makes it really easy. Now. If we've decided that we no longer want this Anthropic Assistant, we can click on the Edit Assistant button and select Delete. Remember, deleting is going to delete all of the versions of your assistant, because each version is pointing to the same assistant ID. There are just slight tweaks to the configuration of that assistant. So now, once we click Delete, we're going to see that our assistant returned to the OpenAI Assistant, and if we click on this dropdown, the Anthropic Assistant is nowhere to be found. Let's run a simple query on our OpenAI Assistant to ensure that the configuration we see in the front end is actually propagating to the back end. All right, we've just asked our Assistant, who made you? As we can see, it responds properly that it was created by OpenAI since we selected the OpenAI model for the back end. I hope that this brief walkthrough of how you can create and version your own assistants has given you some ideas for how you as a developer or a business person can use Langraph Studio to rapidly iterate and test on your core information architecture by making tweaks to the system prompt, the tools available, the LLMs powering the agent, and any other possible configurations that you have for your applications. This tool is intended to be used to fine tune agents to get to the exact state you want to put them into production. It allows you to create a variety of assistants that can be tailored to each specific user. And within each of your assistants, versioning gives you the power to really hone in on the exact behavior you want from that assistant, which is really easy to do through the studio without writing any code. However, if you wanted to do this through the SDK, you could as well. Let's hop over to a Jupyter Notebook and see that in action. All right, now we're in our Jupyter Notebook. 
This walkthrough is going to be using the Python SDK, but all of these functions apply to the JavaScript SDK as well. First, we've made sure to copy over the URL from our deployment in Langraph Studio. You can find this URL on the bottom banner of the Langraph Studio app. Make sure to copy over your unique URL and paste it into the get client function in order to connect to the correct instance. Now that we've connected to our client, we're going to search through all of our assistants, print their ID, name, config, and version, and then we're going to select the assistant with the name OpenAI Assistant for use in the rest of this notebook. All right, as we can see, there are two assistants here. This bottom assistant is the default assistant that gets registered when you create a new deployment. This assistant is defined in your langraph.json file and simply points to your core graph with no config changes made beyond the defaults. As we can see, there's no configuration for this assistant. In addition, this assistant is on version one because we haven't made any updates to it. Next, we have the OpenAI assistant with the configuration of the OpenAI model name. And as we just did a few minutes ago in the studio, we're pointing it to version one even though, as we'll see in a second, there are actually two versions of it. Let's see that in action now, using the get versions endpoint. Perfect. We can see that there are two versions of this assistant, which correspond to the two versions we created in the front end. And the configuration in version two includes that system prompt that we added. In addition, we can run our version in the SDK by using the runs.stream endpoint in this case, we're going to ask it a simple, hello, how are you? We can see that our agent responds with, hello, I'm just a computer program, but I'm here and ready to help you. Fantastic. All right. I hope that this quick walkthrough through the Langraph Studio, as well as the SDK, has given you many ideas to how you could use assistant versioning in your own production applications. Not only can you use assistant versioning for rapid testing on the development side, but you can also use it for interacting with sample user questions and fine tuning your assistants to be perfectly suited for the task that you want them to. Business people can use the studio to enter sample user questions and see the outputs in real time and then iterate quickly on the system prompt, the tools or the models used to make sure that the assistant answers in the correct way. It also allows engineering teams a much quicker development cycle because they can tweak configs and add new things to the configuration that they want to test out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.